Hi guys, welcome to the channel. The best movies on Netflix can be hard to find, but we're not likely to run out of great films anytime soon. There's plenty to choose from, whether you're looking for the best action movies, the best horror films, the best comedies, or the best classic movies on Netflix. We are here to give you a list of best celebrities movies to watch on Netflix. Without further ado, let's begin. Lady Bird Before Christine Ladybird McPherson, Saoirse Ronan, Lady Bird is given her name, as in she gave it to herself. Auditions for the school musical, she watches a young man belting the notes from Being Alive from Stephen Sodheim's company. A few months before, while in a car with her mother, she lays her head on the window wistfully and says with a sigh, I wish I could just live through something. Stuck in Sacramento, where she thinks there's nothing to be offered her, while paying acute attention to everything her home does have to offer, Lady Bird, in the film, written and directed by Greta Gerwig, that shares her name, has ambivalence running through her veins. What a perfect match, Stephen Sondheim and Greta Gerwig. Monty Python and the Holy Grail It sucks that some of the shine has been taken off Holy Grail by its own overwhelming ubiquity. Nowadays, when we hear a flesh wound, a knee, or a huge tract of land, our first thoughts are often of having full scenes repeated to us by clueless, obsessive nerds. Or, in my case, of repeating full scenes to people as a clueless, obsessive nerd. But, if you try and distance yourself from the oversaturation factor and revisit the film after a few years, you'll find new jokes that feel as fresh and hysterical as the ones we all know. Holy Grail is, indeed, the most densely packed comedy in the Python canon. There are so many jokes in this movie, and it's surprising how easily we forget that, considering its reputation. The Irishman Peggy Sheeran, Lucy Galena, watches her father, Frank, Robert De Niro, through a door left ajar as he packs his suitcase for a work trip. Ingo trousers and shirts, each neatly tucked and folded against the luggage's interior. In goes the snub-nosed revolver, the ruthless tool of Frank's trade. He doesn't know his daughter's eyes are on him, she's continually quiet and remains so throughout most of their interactions as adults. York's Diamond District, Howard Ratner, Adam Sandler, does well for himself and his family, though he can't help but gamble compulsively, owing his brother-in-law Aaron, Eric Bogosian, malevolently slimy, a substantial amount. Still, Howard has other risks to balance, his payrolls comprised of Demani, Lakeith Stanfield, a finder of both clients and products, and Julia, Julia Fox, an unexpected beacon amidst the storm of her first feature role, a clerk with whom Howard's carrying on an affair, keeping her comfortable in his New York apartment. She's gotta have it. An explosively frank feature debut that immediately announces Lee's brave, fresh new voice in American cinema, She's Gotta Have It, shot like a documentary, is a level-headed exploration of a young black woman named Nola, Tracy Camila Johns, trying to decide between her three male lovers while also flirting with her apparent bisexuality in order to, first and foremost, figure out what makes her happy. What's refreshing about the film is that Lee always brings up the possibility that none of the above is a perfectly viable answer for both Nola and for single women, a game changer in 1986. So guys, let me know down in the comments section below, which one of them have you already watched? For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.